Hi everybody, it's Judy here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on how you feel about it. If you enjoy this kind of content, let me know by using that feature. <laughs> in today's video, I wanna talk about five things to look for in plants when you are purchasing them. There are probably more things you could look for in plants when you are out shopping or purchasing plants but these are generally the five things that I personally look for when I'm going out to purchase plants. So the number one thing that I look for in a plant when choosing to purchase it is looking for a plant that is multi-planted. So what this means is looking for a plant that has more than one cutting or growth point or actual plant within the pot. So, for example, this is a philodendron Brazil. This has one single plant growing within the pot. And that's okay. I mean, like if you were looking for one single plant in the pot, if you're wanting a plant that doesn't exceed $10, $15, then you might want to go for the smaller plants that have one single plant potted in the pot. But for me personally, if you're wanting best the best value for the plant that you're purchasing, you're going to want to look for one that had that has at least two plants potted within the pot. This is an example of a one planted pot and this one is an example of a pot that is so full of value. <laughs> this is a Sansevieria, a snake plant of the Haani, Haani variety. I'll leave it on the screen what it is, but I've got these available on my website. And what I love about this is that this has at least 10 individual little plants in it. So if you look at it like that, it just looks like one full plant, right? But if you look at it closely, it has those little plants around the sides popping up. So those are little offshoots or new growth points growing out of the plant, out of the base of the plant. So this one has the one main one that you see there, and then you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 11, at least 11 plants within this one. So you've already set yourself up really well with a plant that already has 11 plants within the one pot. You could already start out and separate those plants if you were wanting and create whole new baby plants from that one pot. Now I know it's probably in comparison, that's a one, that's a small four inch pot. This is probably like a six to an eight inch, but you can still find smaller pots like this, for example. This has several plants within it. So this is a Tenanthi Burl Marks CI, Burl Marks CI. And if you look in the center of the pot there, it has several little seedlings or little cuttings or plants, I guess you could call them, within the center of the pot. These plants tend to grow in clumps anyway, so it's nice that they have several plants in the one pot there. Yeah, that's just something that I look for. This one, for example, this is a Florida green. This one has two plants within the one pot there. So there's one, there's this one there and one there two plants in the one pot. So making sure that it has more than one or at least two stems of growth in the pot is gonna ensure that your plant grows up to be a lot fuller, bushier, and I just like plants that have company within the pot, you know? They're not one lonely little stem. I bought this one because I liked it, <laughs> but what I was actually planning on doing with this one, even though it's a single stem planted in the pot, is to chop and propagate the nodes and have at least another one, two, three, four, maybe four plants growing from it. So, I mean, while I'm not entirely opposed to buying single planted pots, I prefer, I just feel it's better value for me if I find the pot sitting in the nursery table that has more than one cutting in the pot. Kind of going hand in hand with finding a pot that has more than one plant in it, it's finding the plant that has really long vines. So for example, you, they might not be all vining plants, but for example, if you were looking for a plant that has that is vining, that is hanging, you're gonna want to look for one that has extra long vines. Look for the biggest one there. And you probably already do this anyway, but for me personally, I like to look for the plant pots, the hanging pots, that have the longest and the luscious vines growing from it. This for example, if this was untangled, this would be hella long, really super long. So you could either 
you could already start out with a really long plant or what you could do with this and what I've done with this type of plant before in my own other Monstera Celta Picana is finding one with really really long vines and then I chopped it back and propagated all of this so you already start out ahead with more than one plant and I've mentioned this in so many videos what you could do is chop this back root it out in a glass of water or root it out in a propagation box and then plant those cuttings straight back into the top of the pot and then you end up with an even more full lush plant at the top. So when you're shopping for a plant, make sure you're already setting yourself up with a nice big full one, just the biggest, fullest, lushest, healthiest plant that you can find. Start yourself out right with that one and you're already gonna be a step ahead of all the other plants that you can get with just a single plant growing out of the pot. All right, the second thing that I look for in plants when choosing to purchase them is new leaves. So new leaves on a plant will generally tell you that it is a good grower. It's got good genes, it's got good cells within it, and it's a healthy plant. So this one is a silver sword philodendron. And as you can see here, or if you can see, there is a new leaf coming out in that stem there. In this pot, there are three stems growing out of it. One, two, and three. And on all three of those plants, there are brand new leaves coming through there. I'll do a bit of B-roll and just put it in so you can see it a bit closer. Um, but there are brand new leaves coming through on this you'll see that the leaves are beautiful and undamaged and overall it looks like a really super healthy plant. Another thing that will indicate to you that it's a healthy plant is if it has aerial roots coming through on the stems. There's an aerial root coming through there. It, it's generally a sign that tells you that this plant is healthy. Another thing I look for on plants is making sure that the leaves are quite healthy and undamaged. Undamaged leaves means that they are able to photosynthesize, they are able to absorb light a lot more efficiently as opposed to a leaf that might have crispy edges or yellowing on them. If it is nutrient deficient, it will also indicate those symptoms on the leaves as well. So if you're looking at a plant, for example, making sure that it doesn't have any yellowing edges, this one, for example, kind of has a few yellowing edges on it. It's nothing to be too intensely alarmed about because it has other factors in it that tell me that it is still quite a happy and healthy plant. But if you find, for example, I don't have an example here with me because I don't have any, I don't bring home or try not to bring home any unhealthy plants with me, but you'll be able to tell on a plant if it's nutrient deficient, it'll have little white markings on it that sometimes people will mistake for variegation. Sometimes it's really just an indication that the plant hasn't had enough light or it's been too crowded in the growing house. A plant will indicate with its leaves if they look really healthy and full and green. If they're undamaged, that the plant is really healthy. So I look for that in a plant too when purchasing them. The number three thing that I look for is to make sure that they have not been overwatered. So I have an example of this. I think it was a lemon lime philodendron that I've spoken about in previous videos. I think it was the plants that I regret buying video. So I, when I purchased this lemon lime philodendron, it was overwatered like you wouldn't believe. The pot that it was in was really super heavy, which told me it was waterlogged. And the base of the plant, where the lower leaves were, were beginning to look a little bit mushy and soft and brown. Unfortunately, I still chose to bring this plant home and I thought, oh, it'll be fine. But it, I did lose a lot of the leaves, the lower leaves, before it actually started to bounce back and recover. So while you may be able to bring this plant back to life, probably best to just start out with a really happy and healthy one instead of bringing one home to revive and resuscitate. Not less, of course, it's in the discount table and you know what you're doing with the plant, then obviously go ahead and do that. I'm not your real dad and I will not tell you what to do. <laughs> but for me personally, if I wanna make sure that I'm bringing home a healthy plant, make sure it's not overwatered. Another thing that will tell you of whether or not a plant is being overwatered is if you look at it, lift the pot, if it's really heavy, probably has been overwatered, and look at the surface of the soil, get your finger in there. If it's really sopping wet, 
it's been overwatered, or maybe it had just been watered that morning. I don't know. Nursery people don't care for each individual plant like we do when we bring them into our home and we start to give them the tender one in one love and care that we give them as plant parents. But if they're in the growing house, they're in the nursery, the worker, it's not their plant. The workers aren't going to care for them like we do. So maybe they've just gone over and done a general watering of all the plants. Also, you're gonna to wanna to look at the base of the plant, look at the stems, if they're mushy, if they're soft, and actually starting to go yellow. Root rot has probably already set in, and from that, there is no return. Once the roots have started to rot, it's really hard to bring it back from that, so I would just leave it. It's easier to bring a plant back to life from underwatering than it is to bring it back from overwatering. Number four, you're going to want to check your plant over for pests, any bacterial or fungal infections on the plant check it over and this is probably the biggest one well they're all they're all quite important but this is probably the biggest one that i would say make sure you check your plant for pests now these all come from growing houses and greenhouses growing houses will generally spray all their plants with some anti-fungicide pest repellents and so grow houses will do this but there are grow houses that are outside where all the bugs and the pests and the spiders and everything are it's just part of nature pests is something that you will 100 percent come across in any plants because that's just how nature rolls <laughs> but when you're purchasing a plant look it over make sure that it doesn't have any uh, maybe spider mites crawling through it, earwigs is another thing, aphids are another thing, mealybugs, thrips. These are pests that you do not want to be bringing into your home, into your existing collection because it's just a real headache to get rid of. So when you're getting a plant, have a look through it. Look at the undersides of the leaves. Look at the places where the leaves are growing out from the stems because pests like to hide in those. Mealybugs especially like to hide in those little crevices. So just make sure that you're checking it over. Another thing you do not want to bring into your home are fungus gnats. They are probably the easiest pest to get rid of as opposed to thrips, spider mites, mealybugs, scale, all those others. And fungus gnats, as annoying as they are, they are probably the least destructive of all those other pests that I just mentioned as well. But you're still not gonna wanna bring them into your home. And generally, I've found fungus gnats to be the number one pest that plants, potted plants come in with because it's just the way that nurseries are. They will have fungus gnats in them. More often than that, than that, <laughs> more often than not, they will have fungus gnats in them. And what way you could do that is if you pick up the pot and you squeeze the soil, if you see gnats flying out of it, then maybe leave it behind, maybe don't take it home. But again, gnats are a little bit easier to eradicate than other pests. And they're probably the most common one that you're going to find in plants at the nursery anyway, and they are easier to get rid of. So I will leave a video linked down below with the fungus gnat control, how to get rid of them. They're probably the one pest that you're gonna find most common in houseplants that you purchase from the nursery or Bunnings or wherever you buy them from. You don't wanna bring any pests into your home. And I'm at the end of this five things that you're gonna look for, um, I'm gonna talk about what I do with houseplants that are brand new to your collection, what to do with them and how to quarantine them before integrating them with the rest of your collection. So yeah, pests was the number four thing to look out for. Number five is probably not as important, but it's something that I still personally like to look for in plants when purchasing is looking at the soil medium. What are those plants potted in? For example, this example, this again, this is a peat moss soil mix. It's not very conducive to really good airflow in the soil. It's not conducive to well draining soil. It's easy to overwater plants that are sitting in this soil, this growing medium. So just keeping in mind that if you do purchase plants that are sitting in this type of soil medium, you're probably gonna want to repot them as soon as it's appropriate. As soon, what I say, as soon as it's appropriate, because when you bring your plants into your home, you're gonna wanna let them acclimate before doing anything with them, before repotting them or any of that. So it is a bit of a process that you will learn to understand and just become natural to you as you grow your plant collection. But yeah, keeping in mind that if it's in this certain soil mix, or another type of soil mix that isn't well draining, that isn't conducive to healthy root growth, you're gonna to wanna to 
repot your plant as soon as it's appropriate. A lot of plants will actually be grown in those because that's what the grow houses, nurseries, larger nurseries use because it's more cost effective and it's not a permanent thing. Most people will want to repot their plants when they bring them home anyway. But what I personally like to do just for the sake of inspecting the plant is, is looking at the soil medium, looking at what it's planted in. This for example has a really nice chunky fluffy soil mix. Again, this is the philodendron Florida green and I'm really surprised because this comes straight from the grow house. I'm really surprised that it's got quite a nice airy soil mix in it as well. It's got bark, it's got the co cocoa peat moss, it's got um, actual soil and perlite through it as well. So that tells me that the grow house that these plants are coming from is a grow house that actually cares about the health and the growth of their plants, not just like mass production. And that's what I'm really happy about with the supplier that I found for the plants that I'm currently stocking in my shop. And I'm gonna be getting plants from other suppliers too, but with the ones that I've currently got in stock on my shop, they've come in with a, actually a really nice soil mix. So I'm really happy with that. So yeah, that's just something, another thing that you're going to wanna to check when looking at your plants to purchase. So I know there's probably more things to look for in plants, but these are the main five things that I look for. Now I wanna talk about what to do with your plant when you've brought it home from the nursery or Bunnings or wherever you buy your plants from. So I've looked at these five things, I've deemed it worthy to come home with me or maybe it just really spoke to me and I wanted to take it home. What I do with these plants, so I've made sure it doesn't have pests but still erring on the side of caution, like I've just met this plant. I don't know what it might potentially be carrying in the soil, carrying in those hidden crevices of the leaves. And it might have some fungus gnats eggs in the soil. Who knows? I don't know. I've just brought it home. I've just met it. I want to date it for a bit. You know, I want that, you know, that little period that you go through when you're, you've just met someone, but you don't want to define the relationship yet. You don't want to yet say that you're dating. You're just kind of like getting to know it. That's the period, the quarantine period that you want to go through with new plants that you've brought home. What I do when I quarantine brand new plants that I've brought home is I leave them in a room like my laundry room, for example, I leave them in that room. They still have light, they still have airflow, they still have warmth and a certain level of humidity in that room. So they're still getting what they need, but they are not in contact or direct contact with my other plants that I've already done everything that I need to with them. We're, we're solid. We're in a proper relationship now. Like we are dating. <laughs> That's weird. We're not dating. That's weird. We've got a relationship, okay? I know I know where these plants are at. These ones, I don't know yet. So they're gonna be in quarantine. What I do with my plants when I put them in quarantine, so I have them in a room separate from my other plants. And then when it comes time to water them, because often when you bring them home, the soil will already be quite moist. You don't need to water them straight away. Maybe you do, but most times I've found that I don't need to. When it comes to watering, I will set these babies in the shower, okay? Put them in the shower and really give them a really good shower, a good drench, wash the undersides of the leaves, wash off any potential pests that might be on them, around them, nesting in them, just wash them all off completely. Then I go in with a really good spray over with neem oil. Neem oil or eco oil or pest oil, I'll show you guys here what I use. And I spray all the leaves down. I spray any new emerging leaves that might be coming through, over the leaves, undersides of the leaves, the stems, the places, those little vases where the leaves are growing out from the stem, those little crevices. Um, I'll spray it all down and then on the surface of the soil, I'll spray that with neem oil as well. This will completely, not completely, but this will help wipe out any potential pests that might be there. And this is a pest maintenance thing that I do every single time I water from there on out as well. Spraying your plant leaves with neem oil does two things. It helps with the pest management and it also helps shine the leaves of your plants. So it's kind of hitting two birds with one stone and that's what I do when quarantining my plants. I generally keep brand new plants away from the rest of my collection for about a month, just keeping an eye on them and making sure that they're still gonna continue to grow and thrive and just continuing to treat them with neem oil for for the length of about a month or two months, 
depending on how the plant is behaving or looking. Now, when it comes to repotting a brand new plant, often I will leave them in their nursery pots, in their grow pots, for as long as I need to, until I start to see roots growing at the bottom or they're starting to poke out the top. If the plant is not root bound, I will put off repotting it altogether and just leave it in the original nursery pot. That's why I mentioned I like to find plants that come in already a good soil mixture because if I, for example, this, this philodendron is becoming the star of the show. For example, if I brought this home in that peat, moss, soil mix. It needs to be repotted. I don't like that soil mix. I don't want to leave it in there. But if I repot it straight away before it's become root bound, then that already starts my plant out in a shocked state, you know? So that's why I like to make sure it has good soil. Let it grow in that soil until it's root bound, until it actually is busting out of the pot, then I'll repot it. You don't need to repot your plant straight away as soon as you bring them home. Uh, they're generally quite happy to stay in the grow pot for as long as they need to. The reason why I also try and hold off repotting plants is that I want them to acclimate within this space. I want them to be able to get used to the atmosphere, the warmth, the levels of humidity that I have in my home. And if I repotted it straight away, that's another level of shock that the roots are going to have to get used to when they're still trying to get used to the light, humidity, and just my general care for the plant as well. So that's why I try and not repot plants straight away as soon as I bought them. So yeah, I think that's all I need to say about things to look for in plants when you're wanting to purchase and bring them home and the things that I do quarantine wise or pest management wise when I do actually bring them home and get them used to my space, I suppose. So that's it for this video. I hope it made sense to you guys. I hope it was helpful and informational. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy this kind of video and any other questions that you might have. I'm sure there's probably stuff that I've forgotten to mention, but these are the general care tips that I have. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, why not do it? You're already here, you may as well. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Please like the video if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. So hungry. So when you're buying a plant, having, so when you're buying a plant, having anti-pest repellent, no, not anti-pest, pest, pest repellent, that's, that's um, redundant. Pest repellents. <laughs>